Here's how you can turn any photo into a cartoon with Photoshop. To begin, once our photo is imported into Photoshop, we need to duplicate it by pressing Command or Control J on our background layer. I'll now right click on that duplicated layer and convert it to a smart object. With our layer converted, the first step in cartoonizing our subject is to make their face look wildly distorted. So we're going to use the liquify filter to make that happen. With that duplicated smart object enabled, I'll go up to filter and down here to liquify. In the window that appears, we want to first disable the show backdrop settings so that we aren't seeing any of the original image. From there, we want to go into the face aware liquify where it's automatically going to find our subject's face and we can play around with these different settings to adjust how our subject looks. For some of these settings where we have a left and right option, we can just click the link icon if we want both of those settings to match. Now there is no right or wrong with this process, you just need to play around with these sliders and find something that you're happy with and you can change it later if you would like. But I'm just going to work through all of these sliders here from the eyes through to the face shape and then I'll meet you when all of my settings are complete. So I've just finished applying my adjustments looking at the before and after, it kind of makes the person look a little bit more crazy, but it's perfect for the cartoon effect. Again, there is no right or wrong with this, so use these settings as you would like, but once you're happy with it, we'll click OK to exit the liquify filter. Now with those adjustments applied, our subject still doesn't look very cartoony, and that is because we need to apply a bunch of different filters that are gonna add some smoothing effects and some line effects and things like that across the image. So still working on the same layer as before, we're going to add a oil painting filter to begin. Going up to filter and down here to stylize and then oil paint. I'll zoom in so you can get a better view of what is going on, but it essentially smooths out all of the textures and gives our subject a more painterly feel. For the stylization, I'll crank this to 10, and I'd recommend you do the same. And for the cleanliness, you can play around, but I will choose 7. As for these other two settings, they're not going to make any difference, so I'll click OK. The next filter we want to apply is a surface blur to help smooth some of the details around our subject and remove some of this painterly look. So I'll go to Filter, Blur, and then Surface Blur. We don't want the subject to look totally blurred out like this, so I'll bring the radius back down to something like 4. And the threshold you can place somewhere between 30 and 60, but you can play around with this as well. Clicking OK to exit that adjustment, we're now going to add a filter gallery effect that will apply some lines across our image. So going up to, once again, filter, but this time filter gallery. In the window that appears, we'll go into the artistic folder and then choose the poster edges setting. As you can see, it adds some lines to our subject and some of the details around his face. But for our settings, I'll leave the edge thickness to zero, the intensity to one, and the posterization to six. With that looking good, I'll click OK. And now the cartoon effect is coming together. If you find that there are any little details that you want to get rid of, what we can do is double click on the surface blur setting within your smart filters, and then you can increase your blur radius to remove any little details. For example, his mustache here would be a lot more visible if I didn't have as high of a blur, so that would be something that I would maybe want to adjust. But I'm happy with how it looks here. The other option that you have is if these lines from our final filter gallery effect look too intense, we can double click on this little option here directly across from the filter gallery, and this will open up our filter blending options where we could go and reduce the opacity of just that one filter adjustment to find something that looks more suitable to your tastes. So I'll bring this down to something around 60-ish percent. Now our photo is looking pretty cartoony, but to take this one step further, I think it's a fun effect to make your subject's head look a little bit larger as well, just to take it one step further. So using the pen tool, you can go and create a selection around the outside of your subject's head, tracing their jawline and then any other elements around their head, such as the headphones in this case. The pen tool is outside of the scope of this lesson, but if you want to learn more about how to use that tool, I'll leave a resource in the description below for you to watch after this video. But in this case, I've already created that selection, so I'm just going to load it into my project. With my selection active, I'll click on that smart object layer and press command or control J to duplicate the contents of that selection onto a new layer. I'll now grab the move tool by pressing V and then just scale the subject's head like so and position it 
over top of his neck where it would make sense that his head would be. Pressing done to commit to those changes. The final thing we can do is add a little shadow underneath his chin. So I'll click on the underlying image layer, that is the smart object, add a new transparent layer above it. I'll call this to shadow. And grabbing the brush tool by pressing B, I'll choose the soft round brush with 100% opacity and flow. And then I'll go and sample a color from the shadows of the subject. So I'll hold Alter Option while my brush tool is active, click in that area to sample the shadow color, and then just go and paint around his neck like this to add that shadow in there. And to blend everything in, we'll change that layer blending mode from normal to multiply. And since this looks too intense, I'll bring the opacity of that layer down like so until you're happy with the result. So quickly turning that shadow on and off, it just adds some nice separation from our subject's head. And to finalize our effect, I'm going to add a posterization adjustment, which will just add to the cartoony look. Going to the adjustments panel, I'll go down to posterize and making sure that this adjustment is at the top of the layer stack. I'll set the color levels of this posterization to nine for this case, but you can choose whatever amount you like. Since this obviously doesn't look very good, I need to reduce the layer opacity of this posterization adjustment. So going to the opacity and bringing this down like so until I just get that bit of gritty texture in some of the shadows in the midtones, and it just adds to that cartoony look. So now looking at that before and after, we have successfully created that cartoon effect. Now, if you have a hard time remembering all of the filters that we use and the different steps throughout the process, I created a free lesson cheat sheet that you can get for free in the description below. It breaks down all of the steps that we covered in today's lesson in one nice PDF format, so it's easy to remember in the future the next time you want to create this effect. Again, that is available in the description below, and with that, I'll see you back here next time.